Welcome to the That Pitch Podcast. That Pitch Podcast helps music producers and artists tap into the world of sync licensing, publishing, music business, and more. So if you're tired of trying to make it and are more interested in making a living, then you're in the right place. I'm your host, Mark, the founder of thatpitch.com. Today, I'm joined by Nathan Pauly, a music producer based in Nashville by way of North Carolina and kind of Virginia too. Uh, he landed two placements with us this month, and this is actually his first month with that pitch uh dude nathan welcome what's up dude dude thanks for having me on man i appreciate it did you like my smooth intro yeah it was <laughs> it was so <close>, smooth <laughs> i try um dude so okay uh we talked about it a little bit before recording but um so you're kind of from north carolina kind of from virginia now you're in nashville Tell me about that. You obviously, I'm assuming you moved to Nashville for music specifically. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So I kind of grew up doing music. Um, my dad's like a, he's like in, uh, he's like a worship pastor. So like I grew up around oh, nice. church and all that. And so I, I kind of grew up doing a lot of music in the church. Um, and then went to school, still did music for a while. And then knew I wanted to do like more producing. So I just moved here um after kind of getting some connections and just started producing mostly produced like for my band more so um which it's funny that i got solo piano placements but i'm more of like a pop producer <laughs> so yeah funny how that works but um <laughs> yeah yeah so that's kind of my brief story if you will <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah yeah i think we were talking to uh Curtis Parks uh, last week, um, who actually, funny enough, what this is really funny. He did the opposite. Move. So he's in Nashville. He or he was from Nashville. He moved uh, to Richmond. Yeah. So he moved to Virginia. <laughs> um, also, kind of grew up in CCM sort yeah. of worship music, and um, I think he landed solo piano this month really? too. <laughs> and he considers himself primarily a pop producer. So uh, sounds like you guys got to become friends. Yeah. <laughs> Really, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know the the funny thing about like uh, you know worship music, CCM music, is that you know you learn great pop, uh, you know pop records. Uh, a lot of the changes are pretty similar in pop music, and um, you learn, I'd say, enough theory to kind of like work your way around in a lot of like general music, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Um, so I'm not surprised that you landed solo piano because you obviously knew your, your way around. Um, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. It helps. I guess I, I went to the music school for like a year and then, Oh, where'd you go? I, so I went to Liberty university. Um, okay. Yeah. But I kind of quickly dropped out of the music program and finished with a business degree. <laughs> so cool. I, I went to uh, Berkeley College of Music and yeah. I dropped out after a year. So. Yep, that's the way to go. So uh, yeah, I kind of kind of pulled more of that like theory. I guess not really even for this, but um, right. Yeah, it helps sometimes. I don't think it's totally necessary, but it helps. I th I think it's good to learn the rules so then you can know, like you can be uh, aware of what rules you're breaking. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people pursue music and uh, th let me know if you disagree with this, but I think a lot of people pursue music and they're like, Oh, you know, it doesn't matter. You don't need to get trained on any of this stuff or whatever. And I think like that can make sense, but I think, you know, I'm all for education and like every single, uh, Avenue that it, it shows up. Yeah. And so I think if you're going to break rules in music theory, it's a lot better to understand what rules you're breaking, totally. you know, totally. um, because you can only really have the ability, uh, like it, it, like if you're breaking rules all the time, then the record's not going to make any sense and nobody's going to listen to it. But exactly. if you break it for a specific reason, you know why you're doing it. I think that's really powerful, you know? Totally. Yeah. I think my thing is I'm always more concerned about just if it sounds good, like, right. I don't really care about the rules that much. Granted, like, <laughs> kind of like have been taught the rules. So like, I'm it's not... kind of built in now, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of hard to imagine life without the rules, if that makes sense. <laughs> but I'm more concerned about, hey, does this like sonically sound good? That's like yeah. more my thing. 
Then is it doing what I needed to do? Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I love that. So you moved out to Nashville. Yeah. Um, you said you're in a band. Are you producing clients out there? How's the career going? What's, what's up with that? What are your, what are your kind of pursuits right now? Yeah, man. Um, so I moved out here in 2019 and I, kind of have done like some traveling um granted like traveling's kind of been here and there with touring COVID. And that kind of yeah. thing but, <laughs> <you know. laughs> i was wild dude i was like backpacking during COVID. i went down to panama <laughs> I, <laughs> I sat my ass at home so uh, <laughs> uh i try well once uh once my wife and i got vaxxed and double vaxxed and boosted yeah. and we got it we're just like, all right, we're a cesspool and totally. we know how this is, this is, we, we know how we're going to experience it at least. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we'll be as safe as we can to protect everybody else, but it's like, we know what we're up against. So totally. let's just fucking do it. Let's totally. go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but COVID kind of obviously changed stuff. I was kind of more focused on, um, you know, producing after COVID hit cause you know, everything everything touring wise like changed but in the studio things were at least manageable you know so okay but, so just did you were like hey i'm just gonna control what i can control yeah right now. yeah kind of um but yeah i produce mostly for my band and then i have a few other clients um that i produce for as well um it's kind of weird in nashville it's like you kind of get to know like everybody and at some point you work with somebody for like a little bit and then you just like kind of continually have new people that you're working with um so i i've kind of like tried to like in the past year or two like completely filter out any like touring anything like that and okay. do more so producing songwriting that kind of thing um so yeah that's do kind you, of been my focus recently do you would you say like so when i when i started um making like an active effort to play a little bit less live. I guess it's not that I wanted to play less is that I just became a lot more selective with the, with the shows I was playing. Yeah. Um, where it's like, Hey, cause I, I'm primarily a drummer. I got into producing now I'm in licensing. So it's, you know, that there's the <laughs> career transition, but yeah. um, what I kind of found is like when I became a lot more selective with what gigs I took, as a drummer um it kind of opened me up to so much more ability to produce and yeah i don't know about you but like i i felt like when i was a drummer and just an instrumentalist it was very hard for me to have a lot of um power over my own career because i was you know not always if you know i had session work or i was teaching but nine times out of ten i was dependent on somebody else you know for the tour because i'm not mm -hmm. you know nobody's showing up for a drummer they want a, a band or an artist um so i would have to wait for the call or whatever or i was playing gigs like you know cover gigs and wedding gigs that i yeah. hated yeah. when i when i started really going in towards production i just kind of realized like how much more control i had over it and that itself was such a freeing aspect for pursuing you know, my career in music, did you kind of find, find that to be the same in, in, uh, you know, your, uh, career steps and, and pivots? Yeah. Cause I feel like everybody has pivots over time yeah, for different reasons. No, I think, I think it's weird cause you kind of have to figure out in any kind of relationship. I'm always trying to figure like working relationship. I'm trying to figure out who is working for who. So it's like personal too, bro. No, yes, <laughs> no, but for real though, like, um, like you're saying, like when you're on tour, you're working for the artists. When you're a producer, you're still working for the artists. Um, at least that's how I think of it. Now there is like, obviously licensing stuff is like kind of just making whatever you want to. That's why I love doing stuff with my band is cause I'm like, I have an equal, it's not like a client relationship. It's more like a, Hey, these are the friends that I make music with. And in a lot of ways, like I still just make music with my friends and like, I'm just, you know, we're just kind of making stuff up together. But I think like 
it is interesting because I do really believe in the saying no to things so you can say yes to the right things. Right. Um, and that's something that I, I learned a while back because like, just to be honest with you, like I am not really a country music guy. Like I don't like country music very much. I respect it. Um, and living here has made me respect it a lot more because I have a lot of friends yeah. that, that do it. But like, I am not going to be the guy that does it. So listen, I'm, I'm a progressive Jew from New York, so I'm, I'm not much of a country uh, yeah. player myself. No, I can't really relate as well. No, I, mean, it's like, <laughs> I, I mean, there's, there's some country music I love, but like, that's not going right. to be like my career path. And I kind of have yeah. to like accept yeah. that, like, that's not who I am. And I'm a lot better because I accepted it. You know, when, when I was at school, um, I got really lucky early on to have like the mentors I did. I think in music mentorship is so important, you know, yeah. um, because, you know, you can take courses, you can go to school, but I think a mentor or somebody who's looking out for you, they know your situation and they're like, you know, they, they, they give you the, the advice you need to hear whether or not you, you want to hear it at that point. Yeah. And you know, I was, I was drumming for various artists, nothing big, you know, just a um, couple of indie pop artists. Um, and then I would fill in on some random gigs, like spot dates and stuff. Yeah. And it was funny. There were two things that happened when I was at Berkeley, I got there and, you know, I thought I wanted to only be a touring drummer the rest of my life. And I forgot who said this to me. But, you know, we were all in the same room, uh, you know, it's called a shed. So like all the drummers are there, you know, shedding. So you, um, there's a thing, if there's like a drum jam, it's like you kind of just trade solos. Everyone's playing a beat. Yeah. Every four bars or eight bars, somebody's soloing and then it goes in a circle. Um, you're all kind of trying to top each other. It's, it's <laughs> fucking cool. Um, but, you know, I like I, I did a couple of those and I had a bunch of friends doing that, but um, I realized that they wanted to be drummers. They wanted to be the big drummers and I loved drumming, you know, and that, that was it. But it's, yeah. it's like the, I didn't I didn't want like I didn't really want it. And then I got like in the production crowd and I was like. I think this is what I like. I wasn't trained to know that I wanted this route. Yeah. But I really like, it makes so much more sense for like how I want my life to be. And I was like producing a bunch of different artists and stuff. And the way I got more into indie pop was my friend was like, Mark, like, you know, you're not going to work on huge gospel records. <laughs> like you're not going to work on, uh huge country records like you're the indie pop synth pop guy that's okay you yeah. like hip hop too like do what's second nature to you because the people who are like like the drummers that are trying to work with these gospel artists they've been doing this their entire life yeah like they were built for this you you just like you're not going to work into that mm -hmm. you know yeah so i don't know i just i can relate with that of like hey like i really need to go in this this direction it's like a you know come to jesus or come to moses moment yeah you know? <laughs> no and i i do i do think that that's true it's like i have a lot of friends that their thing is like touring and like that's great it's not my thing i've tried it right i don't really want to do it anymore and i'm cool with that um and i have friends that I think, like yeah. i know that like that's their biggest dream to like play drums right. for whoever it is live or whatever and I'm just like, no, I'd rather hear my record that I made on, you know, radio or something like right. that's my dream, you know? So it's like, I think it's yeah. been good for me to kind of narrow my focus, you know? So, yeah. And I, I think also just being in the music industry, um, people, I feel they don't mean it, but I think they try to train people for what they want. Like, I know a lot of people that should not be famous. It would be the worst thing for them, but it's like their default dream. They want to be famous and rich. Yeah. It's like, maybe you haven't really thought about this. Like, what do you want your life to look? 
like, oh, well, I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to play shows and meet people. It's like, well, you don't need to, need to be wildly famous and rich to do that. Maybe you need like five grand a month and, you know, uh, 20,000 monthly listeners. Like that's all you really need to do this, yeah. you know? So I feel like a lot of that, that's really cool that you took the time to realize what's right for you. Yeah, no, totally. And I think also too, like with that, I had a good mentor of mine who kind of just said mm. that he said, like, you need to define what success looks like to you. Um, which I thought was really blunt, but really helpful. <laughs> um, yeah. and just for me and my life, like I have a wife and I, we want to have kids one day and it's like, I don't want to be on the road for the entire time, you know, like that just is not successful to me to like neglect that part of my life. Um, and that's just, you know, what, what it's like to me. And I think it's totally okay to like, you know, understand like how your personal life and your professional life can actually fit into the same, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I, I always say like, you don't have to be the biggest, you just gotta be profitable. Yeah, totally. You know, it, it's gotta work for you. If, and a lot of people don't realize that like just making a living and not being worried about rent or your mortgage or whatever next month, that's like the top 1% of the music industry. If you really think about yeah. it, you right. know, and people got to pat themselves on the back more. I mean, if somebody gets like, for instance, dude, you got your first couple of placements. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's amazing because 99% of people in the world, in the music industry will never get a placement, you know? We've made it way easier, which is awesome. And I'm stoked about it. You that. definitely have. <laughs> um, we're, hell yeah. <laughs> Testimonial. <laughs> no, um, but, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's like, I, I think growing up, it's like, you know, you see all the stories of these massive rock stars and like, you know, all this crazy stuff. And I don't know, for, for me, I got to a point where it's like, I, like I like playing, I like touring in very specific conditions or else it's not really enjoyable for me. Like I, I like to do it, but I don't like to have to do it. Like I have a friend who's doing 250 dates a year right now. Yeah. And he hits me up every, he's a, one of my best friends. I love him. And he hits me up every day. He makes a killing touring. Yeah. Um, it's for a big tribute band but he's played like Red Rocks three or four times, Madison Square Garden a bunch of times. It's like one of the biggest, I'm not going to solo him out, but like, cause I'm saying stuff that he's you know talking about. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, he hits me up every day and he's like, dude, all I want to do is just make records for sync, make records to build my publishing. That's all I want to do. And everybody's hitting him up and he's like, and they're like, dude, you're on the road all the time. That's amazing. That's what you always wanted. And it's like, once you're there, once you've experienced it, only then you can really say what you want. And I think that's the, the hard part is you kind of have to achieve these things that are very hard to achieve to only then realize, is it what you really wanted? Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. I think that's, I think I, from everyone that I've talked to that, that that's kind of how I feel like people that I know who are pursuing music, you know, think about it as well. It's, you know, you have to like really know what you want to do because it doesn't just like happen for you if you don't, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's also, we just, we tie up music with our identities so much that all success has to stem from that one thing. Yeah. And it's like, there's a lot of life that does not include music. And I'd say all music is inspired by the rest of that life. So. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. And that's, that's been tough for me because I, I think like I like get so fixated on getting this track to sound perfect. <laughs> but oh yeah. I, you struggle with uh, perfectionism. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, a lot of the stuff that you've said about just tracks sitting on your hard drive, I'm like, Oh, that's me. Um, <laughs> got, Stick them somewhere, dude. Got a million, <laughs> a million yeah. unfinished tracks just sitting on my hard drive just cause I like, I'm so focused on, if they're not perfect, I'm like, oh, they're just, I'm going to throw them away. So. Right. We're, um, I've toyed with the idea of like, 
Because I mean, you work you working with clients. It's like everything can get done. It sounds dope, and they just never put it out. And yeah. you're like, are you you're kidding me, right? Yeah. Like, we spent a year and a half on this, and you didn't put it out. And it they don't they're not trying to be rude or anything like that. But you're just it all comes down to like. I mean, a lot of it's insecurities, you know, of like, how are people going to judge this? What if it doesn't have any views? I've even thought on that pitch, once the new platform launches, having kind of like an auto publish to Spotify thing where it's like, hmm. it's like Amazon, the one click buy button where it's like, you bought it. You didn't have to do yeah. anything. Yeah. It's like, as soon as it gets uploaded, it's going to like default to release. <laughs> you have to opt out. If of releasing was that <laughs> easy. <laughs> well, if you That'd be like great. Distro, Distro Kid's amazing. I love Distro yeah. Kid. Um, Phil Kaplan's a hero of mine. He's an awesome dude. He's helped so many people make so much money in music. But even filling out something on Distro Kid, it's a it's a lot. You have to do a, and it. I understand why, you know. Yeah. But if there was just like a, it auto does it for you. <laughs> that would be great. I would love that. <laughs> it's like you. It's like you have no choice, but it's being released. Like you have to try to not get it released. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny you say that because I, being the producer, like I don't handle that kind of stuff normally. I, right. <laughs> the artist normally handles that. I'm just like, here's the track you do with right. it. <laughs> what, what about, what about your band? How's the creative process for that? Um, putting stuff out, yeah. all the members in Nashville. Yeah. So three out of the four of us are the other guys in Atlanta um oh great but yeah we were actually an indie pop band um but oh, yeah, probably more so on the pop side than the indie side if that makes yeah, sense it's, it's i honestly dude i'm like a synth pop guy it's yeah. just who the fuck uses that term Everybody exactly. uses indie pop exactly <laughs> exactly um S synth pop is like five percent of indie pop but i realize the skills i have to make synth pop can apply to anybody who identifies with indie pop yes <laughs> so that's why i started saying that <laughs> yes so if you're going more if you're if you're on the scale of laney to uh to uh what is it hippocampus it's like okay laney <laughs> nice <laughs> pretty pretty cool all, all, but all the shit i make is like a hundred percent passion pit and kids of 88 okay like that's how I, everything sounds <laughs> i feel that i, feel that. <laughs> I can't um, i can't help it i try to work on other things and you yeah, should I, it, at this point i help it I know. It's like at this point, I just get hired like for hip hop records to make something sound dirtier, and I'm like, I guess that's that's gonna be the legacy I leave in production. <laughs> Look, somebody's gotta do it. <laughs> Somebody, I'm dude. I'm like, I'm like dirty jobs, bro. So, dirty job, and somebody's gotta do it. Yeah. Um, what was the question? Oh, with our band. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, honestly, that's still kind of a question we're trying to figure out. Is like how our creative process works. Every song is honestly different for us. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. Are you good? Um, uh, but yeah, every every song is kind of different. Like we'll have, sometimes our lead singer just goes and writes with somebody else and did I come out with the song? And I'm, he like, well, what's, I guess what's kind of normally happened is he writes a song with somebody. He kind of demos it because he's kind of a producer as well. Um, we kind of usually co-produce things, uh, which is fun, but, um, he kind of usually makes a demo for it. And then I'm kind of like, I kind of like run with it with however I'm hearing it and just right. kinda like pump out just this like crazy, whatever, just in the opposite direction of him. And then we just kind of meet in the middle at some, some way if the song so is like worth yeah. it, you know? So, so you're, you're a finisher. Yeah. Kind of. That's that's, a, yeah. That's always been my gig. Is I'm the finisher. I don't I don't write from scratch. Give me it, and I'll fuck it up and make it sound cool. Totally. You know. Totally. I have a hard time. I think like what I've noticed about myself recently is, I feel like there are a lot of things that like I can produce, and I would rather have somebody limit me to like, okay, you go down this path, and then I'm like, okay, I'll chase that. Um, I don't know if that makes sense at all. It makes it makes complete sense, man. I can't work from scratch. I actually hate it. It's I need someone 
I, that's when I realized I was a finisher and that's actually like a really valued skill in, in production. I don't make anything from scratch. If somebody uh, wants to hire me to do that, I typically refer them to somebody else. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not a writer. I don't start from scratch. I don't, you know, I, you give me something and I thicken it up to make it sound how you need it to sound. Yeah. So that's, that's been my gig. Yeah. And that's kind of why it's hard um, to like, it's it's been like kind of a challenge to figure out what our sound is which we've like developed in the past but you know as always every good band like changes so it's like what are we changing to do how is that working and it's always it's always really fun when you find your group of people that you can work well with and you can come out with good products with Um, it's the best but yeah, I've never like really put words to saying that I'm a finisher, but it makes me feel makes me feel good. <laughs> oh, dude! As as soon as I committed down that path, it's like it was so great because um, I didn't even know that was like a term. Yeah, and uh, one of my buddies up in New York, uh, producer, uh, had a long uh, now now I think he he's like really in publishing, like in music tech or something, mm-hmm. but. Had been working with uh, Rock Nation, uh, a couple other uh, labels up there, a lot of cuts and great guy. And there was always like a lot of people uh, on the production together. And um, I was like, so what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm a finisher. And I was like, what is that? He's like, oh, you know, I, everybody sends me stuff at like 80%. And I'm the one that gets it to that last 100%. And like really makes it how this record needs to sound. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was like, oh, that's, that's literally what I do. I never make anything from scratch. People send demos to me and I make it badass. And you know, that's, that's what I do. And he was like, oh yeah, you're a finisher. That's what like we all call it. Like, that's what I get. Like people hit me up to hire a finisher. That's the thing. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, I got a job title now. <laughs> right on. <laughs> so that's the thing. Like, that's old school. If you think about it, that's old school production. Yeah. Like, you would work with halfway done songs. Only recently, producers are expected to be the songwriters. True. You know? True. If if you look at, like, Daniel Lenoir, like, working with, you know, U2 or working with uh, Willie Nelson's Teatro, like, those records, you know, back in the, what's 90s, 80s mm-hmm. or something? Yeah producer came in he got all the pieces together and made helped form that finished thing and made it amazing but he didn't write everything yeah you know yeah and so i think people sometimes forget what actually was a record producer and what it still can be totally i was uh um, in fact yeah oh no i was i was just gonna say along with that so um there's a good podcast that i listen to um it's called nashville off the record i don't know if you've heard it at all oh i've heard of that yeah yeah yeah. yeah. so there's an episode i think he does with um paul mayberry and he says oh paul's dude he's the dude he's awesome um super insightful but he says like i think you could actually change the title producer to record director as in like Mm. the same way that like a movie director is referred to as it's like yeah. you're the one kind of like honing in on like everything um and i think like probably more so now a producer means v- something very different but just well <laughs> figuring out like where is this track going how and it it goes beyond just like making the track sound cool like it goes to like making sure the vocalist feels confident to like sing the song you know it's a lot of it's a lot of things but i yeah, just thought I it was mean, so interesting to call it a director instead of a producer yeah you know? i mean like i truly believe that a true record producer's job is to fill in the cracks that the artist doesn't have yeah i think now producers are expected to be songwriters uh mix engineers uh, you know, do finishing work for production, mastering, help with the, the PR campaign. But at its core, a record producer traditionally was, and in, in my view, how I operate, you know, for my production clients is 
I'm supposed to be everything that the artist can't handle themselves. And, you know, I think that takes a lot of maturity, I think, in a production career, in my opinion, because, you know, you have to realize that you're not the star. Yeah. Like record producers for pop tracks are not producers for EDM that are on stage. Yeah. You know, like when I go in the studio with an artist, my job is how can I make them shine? It's not about me. Mm -hmm. Like how can we get everything else together to lift them up? Totally. And I think, I think that's, you know, I think that came from just like growing up in studios and like getting yelled at by engineers <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. But I feel like, I feel like that's becoming less and less. And I, I think artists want that more. I think more artists want to claim ownership over what they made. Um, at least what I've been seeing lately. Do you, would you agree? I mean, yeah, I think I, from my experience, I always work a lot better with artists when they have a very clear picture of what they're looking for. Like, Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. I can't help you get to the place where you know what your music is supposed to sound like. I can get it to sound like that. But right. if you don't like have a vision for it, it's very difficult for me to have to like make up for the vision, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm a multiplier, not a magician. Yes, exactly. Like if, if you have a vision on your track, I can multiply that vision into something amazing, uh -huh. but I, I can't create something incredible from nothing that you're going to think is perfect. Exactly. And I think that's where a lot of producers mess up when they take on clients, they work with artists is they assume that they're taking the role of I'm the artist and this person's just singing on it and they want my sound. And it's like, no, like your job is to help them better understand what they want out of their career. And I think, yeah. I feel like that's a dying art, but I don't know, maybe I'm old school. Yeah. I, th I think it's just the role is so different than it probably used to be. And in my yeah. opinion, maybe it should be, but um, right. No, I, right. I think it's just, it's hard. Cause even if you were to, kind of have your vision for it like fill in fill in the gaps of their vision with your vision like yeah. in the end it's still not going to be a product that they love well, you know yeah and i think you know old school record producing where you are filling in the gaps and you're seeing how can i help this artist shine in my opinion it's no different to sync and anything music licensing yeah. i'm looking at a film how can i help their film shine like how can my music help cradle the dialogue how can mm -hmm. you know and um i think your track landed because it is simplistic in in that effect in a good way um the number one reason why a lot of things don't land is because it's overproduced and you were talking about stuff sitting on your hard drive bro that's a lot of times exactly what places you know yeah um so speaking of that let's listen to this track let's do it um Super proud of you. Uh, you got what two placements your first month? Yeah, yeah, they're both uh, solo piano. Awesome. So yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna listen to this one, and it is called. If I can open this up, it. Oh, all right, wait, it's loading. Nice. Wait, why can't I load it? Oh my gosh, I feel like an idiot. Okay, change of heart. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. We have a name. All right, cool. We're gonna play this, um, and. Here we go.
All right, I literally got goosebumps. That's great. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Thanks. So reasons I think this landed, uh, you kept with a single motif for the majority of the song. I think you had an A part and a B part, but you really kept it around. Da, da, yeah. da, da. It's very simple. Like, and I would even argue it doesn't even really get that stuck in your head. It's catchy enough where like it's, you know, harmonically sound, you know, yeah. but it can take its place while other things are going on. And I'm just going to go on a, a go out on a limb here, but I guarantee you in the past, eh, maybe, I don't know, played this live in, uh, in church. I can imagine while people are like coming up or there's like yep. a silent area. Yep. They're like getting communion or, you know, uh, which, whichever, flavor of the faith you uh you're part of you know like that yeah. <laughs> like you know that or while people are being seated it's yeah this is amazing i no, love this i, I, I sounded I, great man what a pro thanks man yeah i kind of i kind of just uh it kind of it's it's hard because it kind of reminds me of uh when i was a kid i would kind of just like play piano because that's like my first instrument that was my first um, instrument too man yeah my mom she's like she would play in church all the time and just like make up stuff and i like yep. growing up i was like i don't know how you really do that and then now that's pretty much what i do constantly yep so my my mom was a piano teacher growing yeah up, so very very similar yeah, yeah my mom moms, moms are great <laughs> was a piano teacher but she did not teach me how to play piano oddly enough so you know what <laughs> kind of funny that's why i started going yeah. in drums yeah you know, you can't you can't do assignments from mom. I know you can't. You you're telling me chores, and now I gotta practice. Yes, exactly, exactly. No, but I kind of I like was whole, on the whole like like learn music, like sheet music, and then I was like, I don't like this. I want to do my own thing. So right. that's kind of where I started. But yeah, it's a it's good to like kind of make things simple and strip it back i think i like for most of these silly piano ones that i do i just kind of like sit at the piano kind of try to make something up and then you know hit record that's pretty much it <laughs> hell yeah so, yeah love that yeah that's amazing man well it sounded awesome um something i i like to kind of ask before you know we close up shop so to speak yeah. um Obviously, you're pursuing music. You're in Nashville, in a band, making a bunch of music, land and placements, kicking ass. What advice would you have for anybody pursuing music, um, creatively or or their career? Just anything, something that's helped you. Um, I think something that's really helped me um, is, and this was just kind of more so taught to me than. Uh, been said to me but oh i guess in a saying less is more um musically to me at least that's how i that's how i view it um just that less is more and i've had a lot of teachers that have taught me that the less the less stuff that you do the more impactful it can be so just the way that i see music is the more simple the better so mm. there there's a saying that um silence gets you the most attention yeah you know so uh people miss when there's no sound there so they're they're eager to to listen a little bit more you totally. know, so totally. love that man Sp space is a tool for sure um and lastly you got any pluggables anywhere uh you want anybody to go uh reach out if they want to license something directly from you or just say what's up and uh i don't know buy you a coffee how do they reach yeah. out i mean my Instagram. He takes coffee, everyone. Probably the best. Um, yeah, just at Nathan underscore Polly. Um, other than that, just my band. Um, it's a really big project of mine. Um, we're just ANX, um, just the letters ANX. But awesome. Um, yeah, man. Any specific tracks we should listen to? Um, uh, probably our newest. It's the best, I think. Sick. What song is <laughs> it's it? It's called Chance It. 
Chanted by Annex. Definitely uh, check that out. Yeah. And uh, hit up Nathan underscore Polly on Instagram. Uh, Nathan, thank you so much for taking your time with us today. Uh, again, congrats on your placement, bro, or placements, bro. First month, yeah. killing it. So proud Thanks, of you, man. man. Thanks. It's, it's uh, great to talk to you, man. Appreciate it. Awesome, dude.